Welcome to BitHeap. In this video, we are going to see how to use the API behind ChatGPT by creating a mobile chatbot application. We will use Node.js and React Native to create the mobile app and the powerful backend that sits behind ChatGPT. By the end of this video, you'll be able to use the API and integrate it with your Node.js projects. This is the end result that we plan to achieve. It's a fully functional mobile app that can be installed on both Android and iOS, where you can have a conversation with the chatbot that's powering ChatGPT as well. Enough with the chit chat. Let's get started with creating this mobile app. If you don't know already, ChatGPT was developed by a company called OpenAI. Therefore, you need first to have an OpenAI account in order to access the API. So first you need to go to platform.openai.com and click on sign up. I won't go through the whole sign up process as it is really straightforward. You can use your Google or Microsoft account to register to the platform. As soon as you create your account, you then need to go and click on the upgrade button on the top right corner. Then click on set up paid account on the resulting page. This doesn't mean that you will pay money to use the API. The way the registration is structured is that you will receive few credits as a first time user. With those credits, you can play a bit with the language models that they expose. For example, the GPD 3.5 Turbo model costs $0.00 per 1000 tokens. 1000 tokens means that it can output texts made of 750 words, so it's quite cheap. But you will also get $5 worth of credits to use after your registration. Therefore, it's more than enough for a simple project like the one that we are building in this video. Coming back to the registration, now you need to input the data of your credit card. Obviously, I will skip this section, but this is what it takes to upgrade your account. Just to be sure that you won't get billed, after using the API, you can set up limits so that you cannot exceed and pay for the calls you are making to the API. Another essential action you need to perform to play with this API is to get the API key. On your personal space on the OpenAI website, you can generate as many API keys as you want. Since you generate one, you won't be able to access it again. So make sure to copy it somewhere safe and not to share it with anyone. Now that we created an account with OpenAI, it's time to do some coding. We will be creating the chatbot mobile app using React Native. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as an IDE for this video, but you can pick up any IDE you like, as this is not a mandatory choice for finishing this project. Since we are going to use React Native, we need to have Node.js installed. At the moment of filming this clip, the latest Node.js version is 19.7.0. To install Node.js, you need to visit the nodejs.org website and download the latest stable version from there for your operating system. To test which version of Node you installed, open a terminal and just type node-v. The installed version will appear on the screen. As an initial step, we need to install React Native CLI. This will enable us to initiate a new React Native project. To install this dependency, use the following command. Next, let's instantiate our project by running this command using the newly installed React Native CLI. Notice the name used in the command. This is going to be the name of our app, OpenAI underscore demo. That's it. The node underscore modules folder has been generated and the package JSON and package lock JSON files have been generated too. Now we need to install our dependencies. We will install React, React Native, and a library called OpenAI. The OpenAI library is the Node.js wrapper for the OpenAI APIs. So it's the most convenient way of interacting with their API as you won't have to deal with the actual HTTP requests that you need to make to have a working chatbot. Additionally to all this, we will also install Expo. If you don't know what Expo is, it's basically a tool that will allow you to test your app directly on your mobile phone. It's very useful in the context of React Native apps, as you won't need to spin up Android or iOS emulators that consume lots of resources. Next, we will use npm node package manager to install each dependency. This will take a while depending on how fast your computer is, so I will fast forward the loading screen for each dependency and will show only the command I use to install them. This is the command to install React Native. This is the command to install React. 
This is the command to install Expo. And finally, this is a command used to install the OpenAI library. So we installed our dependencies and set up our React Native project. Now we need to define our entry point for the app. This needs to be done by creating a file called app.js. We will start by creating a navigation stack object. As you may know, you can navigate a React Native app using a data structure called stack. Each time you change the page, you pop the page you are leaving from the stack and push the new page on it. Even though our app is going to have only one main page, we will still need to add this. We will use create stack navigator method to create the navigation stack. Next, we create the app functional component and inside we are going to reference a navigation container component. Inside the container, we add stack navigation and inside this, we need to add the screens of our app. As our app has one screen, we will only add that single screen, which will be called main. Next, let's create the screen. I'm going to create a new file called main.js. Firstly, I'm going to create the OpenAI API configuration object. This will host the API key that we fetched previously. However, we are not going to add it as a clear text variable, as we do not want anyone to have access to this API key. Instead, I'm going to use process dot env openai api key this looks for an environment variable called openai api key and it will fetch its value to have this working we need to create a dot m file at the root of the project and store this variable alongside with the value of the api key the one that we copied previously next we need to create the openai object the one that will help us communicate with the openai's api I'm going to supply the newly defined config object in its constructor to initialize it using our API key. Next, let's add a return statement where we will add our visual web elements. First, we create the view that will hold the text component that will show the title of our project. I'm going to call it AI Chatbot. Next, we use two nested view elements and inside we are going to add a text component. Inside this text component, we'll specify our message for the chatbot. So we will add a text placeholder to this and we are going to show what we type inside it. Below, we are going to create a button using the touchable opacity component. The button will basically send our input to the OpenAI API. More specifically, the function that is going to handle that is called handle input and it will be called each time we click this button. Let's add another text component meant to hold the output from the OpenAI chatbot. Now let's add our code for the handle input function. We will surround everything into a try catch statement and we'll create a new response constant. The response constant will be equal to the response from the OpenAI API. In order to get a response, we will call the create completion method of the OpenAI object. This method will create the HTTP call to the API and it will fetch the corresponding response. Inside, we need to specify our parameters. The model is the language model we will use for our demo. This one is particularly good as it is the most performant model from OpenAI. The prompt is showing how the chat is going to look like. Temperature and max tokens need to be changed based on your preferences in regards to the length of the output from OpenAI. The bigger the max tokens parameter, the more costs will be inflicted. The rest of the parameters are also related to the output However, we won't dive into the details for those as they are less important and will not impact the output. We are going to use the setOutput method from the React state to be equal to the result of our response object. To get the actual text that is sent by OpenAI API, we need to call the data object of the response, navigate to the choices array, fetch the first element of the array and convert it to text. Of course, since this is a try case statement, we also need to provide a way to handle any exceptions. I'm going to print the exact exception to the console. Finally, I'm going to add some basic styles to this page, but you are free to skip this if you want just a demo app. And that's it. We are now ready to build our project. To run this, let's run this command. After a few seconds, a QR code will be printed out on the screen. On our phones, we need to install the export client from the official Play Store or App Store. With this app, we scan this code and we can see that the app is loaded on our phones. Let's try to ask a simple question like, how are you? And as you can see, we get a response, which means this works as expected. 
To get the build version as an Android or iOS app, you just need to run one of the following commands. React Native will take care of everything and it will output a ready-to-use app that you can install on your phone. That's about it. We've seen what it takes to build a mobile app with React Native that leverages the powerful API behind ChatGPT. Thank you for watching this video and I hope this will prove helpful to you in creating the next big thing on top of the OpenAI Chat API. I have also uploaded the code to this Git repo, so you can just fetch the code and play with it as you want. If you are interested in learning more about chatbots, I published a book on my website, bitheap.tech, where I basically go through everything you need to know to build the next generation chatbot. From the linear algebra base of machine learning to the actual coding, everything is covered there, so I invite you to check it out. That's it from me. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, on my blog, where I publish lots of useful tech articles. And of course, subscribe here and like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy coding.